IC integration and LMS adoption. In a school, seen as the computing use of computers, lumped in as one, and the more we use computers, the better off we go at this. This is a bit of misnomer because it is a rich and diverse field with many different uh, tools and technology involved. Let's have a look at some of them. If we have a look at the 2011 Horizon Report, uh, just a snapshot of some of these things in one of our guides, we can see there's a list of things that will be familiar with some teachers and other things that will not. Each of them is outlined as having an adoption time to when it's mature, you know, it's two years, five years or ten years. So things like mobile computing was expected, or well, sorry, mobile phones as a use in computing was expected to be start to use around 2010 and the infrastructure for that is in place and is being used by some schools. It doesn't mean you'll see it in your school. This is simply saying that across learning in the schools that are more not more progressive but more connected with contemporary learning this is the type of the years that you'll see things cloud computing it was being used in schools this year it's a much more powerful and useful tool than in the past game-based learning is looking at the next two to five years and learning analytics is out there on the horizon for the next five to ten years but these are critical things that we need to be looking at now and understanding these are coming in does it mean that every school will be adopting these in these years? No, it doesn't. How is this determined? Well, let's have a look at something else. If we go and have a look and put these onto the, from the Horizons report, onto the actual curve, the hype cycle that Gartner produces. So here we have the Gartner hype cycle for education. This is 2011 with some of the many items placed on there. These are the items from the Horizon report, but actually when we look at this we need to remove the years because the hype cycle isn't a measured by years. It is individually measured where a particular technology is at its point in time. I've added um, several here in gold from the Gartner hype cycle, which I didn't originally have in the Horizon, but these are all mentioned in the Horizon reports of the last um, three to five years have a look at where some of these are. Bring your own device. It seems strange, it's only just on the horizon now and it's not even making much of a splash. There's some lead schools looking at this but one of the important things for us is we are doing a one-to-one -one rollout. If we do not have in our minds that this will end up as a bring your own device and that, that this is going to go through a lot of hype and it's going to crash into the trough of disillusionment if we are not prepared for the backlashes, we are not prepared for the user cases that will come up, then our one-to-one -one will struggle in the wilderness. Obviously things like e-textbooks, these are front and centre of teachers. This is their daily bread and butter. Using textbooks, we now have a one-to-one, -one, so it makes sense they have electronic textbooks. It's gone through the hype cycle, the, the peak of um, uh, illusionment, it is now going into the trough because people are realizing that hey, it isn't the be all and end all of everything. They don't do everything that you expected. So this has been adopted by many teachers, but you can see there's going to be a lot of a bit of backlash right now. E-portfolio is the other one. These are coming out of everyone was e-portfolio mad. We need to use these. They found them cumbersome, hard to use, but now the technology is mature. That with a new LMS, this should be front and centre. It is easy to manage, keep electronic records of all the work and um, the artefacts that students have made and present them over time as marked objects that they're looking at. Two here, federally identified management is out there. It is now mature, it is now very widely accepted in industry and it is critical to our LMS. The e-textbooks at the moment require us to go and log on to Pearson, Hot Maths, Cambridge, um, Mathletics. So without a federally identified management, we require many, many passwords for our email, for our LMS, for our textbooks, for our learning resources, for our um, objects online. And it's a nightmare. This is something that a teacher doesn't need to know about, but it should be front and centre of technology support areas in um, 
district offices and in schools. And the other one that's coming out of business and is now maturing, Information Technology Infrastructure Library. This is the framework around which we build things and fit them to the needs and the use case of businesses, institutions, both now and what the future predictions are. One off to the side there, learning analytics. This is going to be the one most critical, especially if we're looking at rollout LMS. It would be nice if we knew more than just the marks about kids. We knew the whole picture of the kids as they came through. The trouble is this won't be around for the next five years, but when you look at it, in five years' time, our carrying is sevens and eights are our kids who are in senior school. And if we're not starting to collect rich, varied, and for firm formative data on these guys now, we have nothing to use when they get to upper school. So all these things exist on that cycle, but the trouble is who's using them, how they're using them, how much they're being used. So if we just move them aside for a moment, let's have a look at a few of them. So here we have the uh, diffusion of innovations curve, that is the adoption that things go through. So we have the innovators, the um, first 2.5%, the evangelists that go through, find the new things and start using them and be a bit of a lighthouse. Early adopters, late, early majority, late majority and laggards. And you can't say ICT and put people on this. You keep on saying it's a continuum, but it's a continuum for each and individual technology system that is being used. I can say myself, I was a laggard in the mobile phone stakes. I came late to mobile phones because they had no use for me. If we have a look at this one here, here's a mature product, email. You'd have to say emails are in 100% use throughout schools. 40 years old, it should do by now, and it has benefits and teachers use it. E-portfolios. We saw that they're on the a slope of enlightenment, they're being used properly now. But I'd still say they're only being used by 2.5% the early adopters and they've been having some trouble with them. So this means our looking at how we develop this and how we use this is completely different to other things. We know this is now got a mature, firm framework for using these. The technology is robust and so we can go forward with this knowing that it's going to be very safe and a very good thing for teachers to integrate. Whereas when we look at e-textbooks, the trouble with e-textbooks is we'd put them in the early majority. That is about just under 50% of people are using these somehow in their teaching. But you remember this one was on the downward sli slide. We're going to have a lot of trouble because it isn't going to be exactly what we want. And there's going to be a lot of backlash. So the way you manage the use of this, the way you manage the integration of this into the LMS is completely different to how you manage the portfolios. Cloud computing, a little bit further up. It's moved into the early adopters. Uh, people are finding it useful, but once again, it's on its way down, but a completely different way to manage this one because it's still only early adopters. It's still people who are a bit more resilient in their use of technology and are prepared to have things that go. So you'll have this one, a different plan for managing this one to will managing e-portfolios. So one of our problems in schools is we spend so much time thinking how am I going to train somebody to use this, how will they use it, this is what the use looks like, let's go and actually use, get somebody using the system. You need to understand that their actual use will be tailored towards their intention, their behaviour intention to use it. So why would a teacher want to use it, why would they go to this technology, why would they leave a technology that they've used are familiar with, they may not like it particularly, but it is familiar and I know how to use it and I can go there and use it. So it's about changing their attitude, the attitude towards using that technology and that'll shape their behaviours. Now this is the key part where a learning integrator comes in. If we can make it a pleasant, beneficial and happy place, then they're going to use it. How does this happen? Two critical things. Uh, number one is the perceived ease of use. So if a teacher does not perceive it as easy to use, and now this is individualistic, 
It depends on what the teacher is doing with technology, how they use that technology, whether they perceive that this new technology is easy to use. If it's not easy to use, straight away, you're putting their attitude off. And then the perceived usefulness. Does the end game of this technology have any use to make this teacher a better teacher or an easier to manage something? So if it's just adding another layer of administration on top of everything I have to do, and it's not giving me any benefits immediately, then it has no perceived usefulness. It's interesting to see if it is perceived to be useful, they'll jump straight in and say, hey, I want to use that. So the role as a technology integrator is obviously controlling the external variables that feed directly into this usefulness, perceived ease of use. These are such things as the design of the system, the rollout of the system, the training of the system, and actually just, just the buzz around the system.